Hi guys, Lisa from Mudget Makes. Today I'm going to show you how to vector templates and patterns um, for your cosplay needs. Um, I'm going to show you very quickly how to use a pen tool in case you've never done that before. I would really encourage you to go and watch further tutorials that actually show you how to do that more in depth um, and do some practicing before you go and jump in and do it. Um, and then I'll be doing an actual vector of um, the Destiny Hunter's Knife so that you can see how I actually go about doing it. And I'll also show you some examples of some other vector templates that I've made. Um, some of those might be familiar for you. Um, the program that I'll be using is Illustrator. There are free programs available um, if you don't have Illustrator or the Adobe Suite. Um, Inkscape apparently is quite a popular one, so and that's free, um, so that's one that you might want to look into if you don't have a vector program. You do need to do it in a vector program, you can't do it in Photoshop. Probably could, but it'd be really hard. Um, the advantages of vectoring is that you can resize it to any scale that you need to and you don't lose any detail or information. The advantages of vectoring over hand drawing a template is that if you realize that you've made a, a mistake, you've resized it wrong, you made a mask and the eyes are too close or the mask is too big, it's really easy for you just to jump back in and fix those up rather than if you did that by hand then you'd have to basically redo it. Um, it's a bit more tedious. I do still do some templating by hand, it really just depends on what I'm making. Um, but for particularly complex um, props, then vector templates are the way to go. So I will jump in and show you some examples. And if you have any questions, you know the drill, pop in a comment. Um, and if you liked the tutorial, tell me. Um, but otherwise, enjoy. So I'll be using Illustrator, as I mentioned before. And I'm going to start off by showing you some examples of some vector templates that I've done for cosplay commissions and various other projects. Um, and then I'll give you a really quick rundown of how to use um, the different tools that you'll need to do the vectoring in Illustrator. Um, and then I'll do a live demonstration on the Destiny Hunter's Knife. So you want Illustrator or your other vector program. This is Lady Sif's sword, that's a mouthful, from Thor and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, this was a commission piece and the person that was building it was going to add all the details so I didn't need to add in all of those. So what you'll notice is with this one there's different weights here and that's a really handy tool sometimes so that you know what's a beveled edge and what's a cut edge. So for this one, um, her sword is shaped um, and this will be a guide for where it needs to shape to. The other things that are really handy to know, um, particularly if you have symmetrical objects that you're vectoring, is the use of guidelines. So I have them on a separate layer here and you can see I have a center line. And that means that basically all I have to do is create one side of it and then flip it and as long as it follows those lines and my guidelines I know that it's symmetrical. Um, if those are out then you'll end up making it wonky and particularly if you're doing two pieces that you're sticking together um, that's going to cause problems later on. So the use of guidelines is a really handy tool to make sure that um, all of your details end up precise. So you can see here that I've got this and it means that they're even on each side. It means that my measurements are very accurate as well. And the other thing that you can notice is that um, I've got it to a scale set. And you can see there's a ruler up here. And I'll show you how to turn rulers on and off and I'll show you how to use guidelines. But these are very handy tools to have. This next one here is the Meta Knight Sword. So this is a commission piece. I'm making this one myself. Um, or made this one myself. So I have reference pictures that I've used as I went and sanded this. So I actually don't have different weights in here. I could, um, but I didn't. Uh, as long as I know what's going on 
as I said, I have my reference pictures there when I'm actually cutting and sanding and so forth. But once again, um, this is made to scale and I basically sized it so that it is con safe. The added bonus is that to make it con safe, it has to fall just be, um, around about the one meter length. Obviously, I don't have a printer that can print out anything that big. So when I print it, I print it in poster format and it'll print it over several sheets and then I can stick it together. I'd love to have an industrial format printer. If you have one, I love you forever, but unfortunately I don't. So, and many people don't. So having um, the ability to be able to print over several pieces is a really added bonus. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a Pacific Rim belt buckle. This one in particular was very handy. So with this piece, um, I actually sculpted, then created a mold of that sculpt, and then cast it. I actually cold cast it, which means that I added um, aluminium metal pieces into the resin, and then I can buff that up and it has a nice metallic weight and sheen to it. This is actually a really small piece. So to give you an idea of scale, if I had to do that by hand, that would be really tedious and very time consuming and a high likelihood that I'd stuff it up and have to start again. So with this one, I can create this to scale. So I had a belt buckle that I was attaching this to so that I can know what size that is. And then I had a reference picture that I used to work off and I can get all my pieces to how they need to be. Just to give you an idea. So obviously I've resized that a little bit. But um, having reference images to work off is very handy. The high quality resolution, the image, the much easier it will be to work off. If it's a low res image, it means it's going to be very pixelated, particularly if you have to enlarge it to work on areas. So if you can, it's not always viable, but if you can get high res images to work off, the problem with like, for example, Sif's sword, um, there weren't very good high res images, particularly straight on of the sword. They were all on a slight angle. So that made it really difficult to try and work scale and details and so forth out. So I had to composite something that was based on several images that I had um, from screen caps from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Thor as well as the display that they had of her costume and then sort of pull something from that to get the shape and the scale and all that sort of stuff. So it can be a little bit tricky but we do what we can. So that's this one. Um, and like with these type of shapes like the star you can actually create stars um, and you have like a selection tool here that you can choose your shape. So you don't always have to create like a circle from scratch. You can use those shapes and key in the details of sizing and so forth. To give you another idea of things that you can do is masks. The really good thing about vectoring masks is that you can um, rescale it. So if you find that the eyes are too far apart or too close together, or it's slightly too big or slightly too small, instead of having to redraw it all, um, I can just select it and rescale it to fit which makes it life a lot easier before I actually go ahead and cut into the whatever I'm making it out of so I actually made this one out of warbler and these little details the cherry blossom leaf details were cut out they're like little hole details and then these were added on so made it really simple so I just print this cut that out trace it over and then I can redo it and a really simple one, so this is Connor's um, belt insignia from Assassin's Creed. Um, and this is my beveled edge. So again, if you're doing that for someone else, like if I was doing this for someone else to make off, I would do this as a, a much lighter weight so that they know that that's a beveled edge. So there's some examples of things that I use um, vectoring for, and it just makes life much quicker and um, simpler than fiddling around because my measurements are all in there. I get really nice clean lines. If I make a mistake, it's really easy to edit. So that's a really huge advantage. 
So I'm going to just um, create a new document and then show you how to use some of these tools. So when you create a new document, you obviously go File, New. I already got my size set, so obviously it will depend on what you're making. Make it, if, if it's going to be a one meter sword, then set it to one meter because you can print it across that. And I need it to be in landscape format. So this is my document. So the things that you will need, you'll see over on the left hand side over here, you've got these little arrows, selection tool and direct selection tool. These are two little tools that you'll get to know very well. You see this holy little dude, we'll come back to this one. The other thing that this tells you is that actually tells you your shortcut keys. So you can see the V and the A, they're the shortcut keys. So if I press uh, V, you can see the little colored in dude there. The other thing that you'll need is the pen tool. So basically all your vectoring is done with the pen tool. There are some extras if I press and hold, it'll bring up some other options. And I'll go through those ones in a moment of what they're used for, but Basically just keep it on the pen tool and the shortcut key is P. Down here, these are other important things. This one with the little square cut out, this is your stroke. So this is the line that you are drawing. You want this on. If you have that off, I can't. you, you can't see what you're doing. You can change the color, depends on what you're working on. If you're working on a very dark image, then you might want to make your stroke a red or a white or something like that. This here is your fill. Now for when you're doing this sort of stuff, you wanna have that off. So you wanna have the line through it. If I turn that on, so for example, I've got this, that is going to obscure what you see. And that's bad because you won't be able to see the reference image. So make sure that that is off, but keep your stroke on. So over on this side here, you can see your stroke weight. So depending on the size of what you're vectoring will determine on the weight that you need to go. If it's a very small detailed image, you may want to drop your weight down to 0.5. Um, it will just depend. You'll notice because you won't be able to see the lines or anything like that. When it comes to uh, doing like your beveled edges, and I'll just give you an example of that. You just make it a smaller weight so you can see okay so how to use the pen tool really really quick and I would encourage you if you haven't done this before download some images off the internet or just whatever you have lying in your album and just practice tracing over them so click and it'll create an anchor point click and drag and you'll see these little arms appear this will give you the shape to go pretty much around anything. And it can take a little bit of getting used to. You'll notice that this arm is going in this direction. It is going to pull my line in that direction. So if I suddenly go over here, you'll notice that my line is pulled. So if I want to change that, but I do want to change direction, is I click and that'll get rid of that little arm. And then I can go this way. Okay. And say I want to pull like that. If I decide, oh, that's not quite right, I actually think it needs another anchor point, hold down the pen tool button and you'll see add anchor point. And I can click and it'll add another one. And then remember our little hollow dude? Click and I can do whatever I want to do to him. If I want to make it so that he has little arms, go back over here convert anchor point tool click and pull and you'll see that there's little arms that come out and that's basically it so I have a bit of a practice because it will take some getting used to okay so what you need to do to actually do your thing is you go file and place Grab your reference image. Now Bungie were very kind and gave us really nice um, detailed reference images. So I just have to go find that. Okay. 
And the bonus is it also tells me my scale. Now it's going to be much bigger than what my thing is, so that's fine. And I can just resize that. When you resize, make sure you press shift, otherwise you're going to end up with distorted images. So shift, and you'll get this little arrow. And resize it, and then I can put it here. The other thing that I will need to do is I'll actually need to make um, a mark as to how big it needs to be. To bring up my rulers, I go Command R. This is now my ruler. The zero will start at the edge of this document. Okay, I'm going to have my knife start just a little bit over. So I'm going to set my zero a little bit further over. So all I do is I grab this corner and I drag it. Now to get my guideline is I just click and pull and I'll put it on my zero and then I'm also going to put one now on here it tells me that the size of the knife is 43 centimeters 10 20 30 about there. okay if I need to reset that zero, I can just double click and then we'll go to the edge. So that now gives me boundaries for how big I need to scale this to. Because it is scaled proportionally, I don't need to know how thick it is. I just need to know the length. So I select that again and I don't need to really know any other detail. I'm only going to use this image right here. Um, you'll notice that like Punish Pros props for example he will do um, plans that have a range of different um, dimensions on there like this he'll put the thickness on there and so forth I don't um, I will work that out beforehand and I'll use these reference images to tell me what it looks like it's really up to you if you want to do that go for it absolutely go for it his plans are very very detailed and for the purposes of this this will give you an idea of how to do it and then it'll just be a matter of working out your scale. Um, but yeah, I use these reference images to tell me all the other details that I need to know, so the bird's eye view and that sort of thing. Um, and I, I just do a plan for the actual side of it, for what I'm cutting out and what I'm beveling. So again, shift. So that's that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this other stuff that's around there. You don't need to do this. It's totally up to you. Um, so I'm just going to create a mask so that I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just create a rectangle. So that is my reference image. So if I zoom in, I get a lot of nice details. It's a little bit pixelated, you can see, but it's it's detailed enough that I can see what I'm doing. So that is really perfect. Um, it's also really important that you saved your project. Let's see if Illustrator works. It's been crashing on me lately. So I'm gonna save as. Saving is really important as you're working because there's nothing worse than spending like an hour and then you lose the piece because your computer crashes or illustrator crashes or something. That really sucks. Now I like to work on a new layer because then I can um, remove or adjust or whatever. Um, I just find it a little bit neater and sometimes when you export to PDF the original image doesn't go away even when you hide it. So I'm just going to create a new layer so you'll see over this side here. I click this little thing, it'll create a new layer. And I'll lock that one so that I don't accidentally draw on it or move it or anything like that. Because this is going to be hard for you guys to see, I'm going to make my line red. Nice and bright. And let's see if one point is fine. Because so I think what I'll do is I'll do one point for the outside and then 0.5 for these beveled edges. So 
pick a spot to start. I'm going to start here. This particular curve you would do in two parts and that just takes practice of getting used to. Um, I still make mistakes. I still do it wrong. But the bonus is that you can go in and edit it really quickly um, and adjust anything that you need to. So I'm going to trace this out and then go back in and adjust it. And then one way to check all of your lines and your anchor points is to just zoom in. So you can see. change the color of the black. And there's the hunter's knife. My illustrator is playing up a little bit so there's a good chance that if I try and export it to PDF it's going to crash. 
but normally you just go file export and there'll be a drop down box for you to select um, and you just select the PDF um, and it just means that you've got a permanent way of doing it um, and it also allows you to do your poster printing and there's an option when you do your, your printing in PDF um, to do that. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please do ask in the comment section. And don't forget to like and follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm.